What's up everyone, it's Will back with another video. Um, today, I just wanna go over a few things on the KA that I had questions about in the process of me building this and that aren't really covered anywhere in an easily accessible and digestible video. So that's ultimately my plan here is to help y'all all out with that. So first thing we're gonna talk about is the K20 coil unplug conversion that's on this engine. Um, this bracket uh, I got from Nice Time Racing. Um, it's the gold anodized one. It was a little bit extra, but I figured it was so perfect with the theme of the engine that I just had to. Um, and that came with an oil cap and the uh, distributor cap here. Distributor cap um, doesn't really use the actual rotor or rotor button, but the base of the distributor is still there. So let's talk about how this all works. So the coil on plug harness that goes to all the coils is nothing but a sub harness that Wiring Specialties makes. Um, can't recommend Wiring Specialties enough. Their customer service is literally awesome. They've sent me so much stuff I needed. Um, just helped me out with so much tech support stuff, and they've been they've been super awesome. Um, but this basically just plugs right into the main harness. Not sure where the plug went. It's oh, it's right there but um yeah those two go together <clears throat> and that'll go to the coil on plug harness it has one ground on the back um and then that's pretty much all for coil harness that just plugs right in i do seriously recommend you get the wiring specialties harness i've seen that people can do it on the stock harness but that sounds like a nightmare to me at least so that's why i opted for this one um, so there's the four coils there. So you're, you'd be thinking with a coil on plug swap, why would you still have a distributor in the car? So the camshaft angle sensor in the KA is where the ECU gets your RPMs from. And it's still where these coil on plug conversion is going to pull the ignition timing from. So only difference here is there's no distributor cap. It's just this block off cap. And then there's no rotor inside. All it is is the optical disc. It's in the bottom of here. If you pop this cap off, there's another little gold inner cap with a Phillips head in the middle. Pop that out, and you'll see a trigger wheel. Um, I think I have the stock trigger wheel I can show you. Wherever I may have put it. All right, y'all may just have to trust me on this one. Yep, not liking my chances, but there was a stock trigger wheel in it. Um, it's just a super thin little wheel that goes right in the middle. Um, it almost has like a little caliper around it that senses the holes around the diameter of it or the outer edge of it. And that's how the ECU establishes its timing basically as an optical sensor. So as it sees the holes move across, that's how it basically syncs up timing. Um, this is an AEM trigger wheel. It's on the Nice Time Racing store. That's what this one is, it has, and it basically increases or decreases the resolution. So it's a lot easier for the ECU to find correct timing or cylinder to cylinder tuning, yada, yada, something like that. Um, I didn't dig that far into it, but so the base of the distributor is still in here. You still have to time it up and everything, insert it the exact same way you would in your normal distributor. Um, but this is pretty much all you're using is the cam angle sensor and the optical disc inside of it. Okay. Moving on. That's pretty much the whole coil on plug swap. Your same cam angle sensor plug is what goes on there. And that's pretty much all there is to that. Next, let's talk about PCV delete. So... My PCV system is deleted, or at least the actual check valve is. And if we look behind this alternator bracket right here, you'll see there's a little black 90 AN down there. And that, a 90 degree AN down there. And that goes from a PCV delete plate with a 10 AN on the outside of it, just to this 90 degree. And then that hose 
a very short AN hose. You can't really see it super well on the camera, but it just goes around the bottom of the intake right up to this 90 degree AN10. Okay, that's for the PCV valve. And then for the rest of the catch can vent routing, this is the radium uh, overpriced 10 AN press in plug, more rubber mallet in plug for me. Um, and 10 fitting right here, just right around to the other port on the catch can, vent to catch can. Um, if you're boosted with a special with a standalone ECU, you really don't need that at all. So I'm going to suggest get rid of it. Also, don't do this here, but it will work. Um, if you look down here, it's going to be real tough to see. You can see the little PCV ports that, right where the finger of my fingertip is. Let me see if I can get it to focus over there. Those little ports, they have little tubes. They go to a big metal tube if you don't have your intake simplified. You can delete all those. Knock them out with a hammer. It's a little barb that sticks out of the thing or out of the intake manifold. Knock them out with a hammer. Plug them up. I found just a perfectly sized metric. I think it was an M8 screwed it right in don't do this part but it's sealed with jv weld and rtv so i have a feeling those will never be coming unplugged but you might want to do that a little less sketchy yourself but it's not anything visible so i wasn't super concerned okay next there's not really much coverage on this either let's talk about this chase base fuel pressure regulator for some reason it's really hard to find answers about it or at least clear clarified answers Routing on this is way simpler than I thought it was going to be. Um, first off, on the front of the FPR here, you're going to have this little 90 1 8 MPT connector. Move harness that right there. And that goes to my fuel pressure sensor. That's what that little silver one is. Um, that is a Pro Series fuel pressure sensor from Wiring Specialties, and I also have the exact same sensor acting as my oil pressure sensor from Wiring Specialties. So these are all 6AN lines for the FPR, but the fuel rail is 8AN, so let's talk about this. <clears throat> the side with the filter on it is, of course, your feed. That goes to your feed line, and it's not really going to be possible to see on the camera, but it's if you're looking at the car like this with the firewall in front of you, the feed line is the one on the right, okay? And then the line out of the very bottom of the catch can there, that one is going to the return. This is a deadhead FPR, so you only have one line going up to the actual rail. So that's the return, just on the very bottom. Pressure sensor, vacuum, and then the actual feed to the rail which comes right off this right side. I have it routed right under this AN hose here, routing right up to the rail. And then this is a 6AN to 8AN adapter <clears throat> to actually put it on the rail. And then on the rail itself, I have an 8AN plug on this bottom port, and then I have an 8AN plug on this rear port. And then this 1 8 MPT plug is just plugged with a mechanical gauge just so I have a mechanical read in addition to the ECU read. Okay. Now, let's talk about the turbo feed. This is a eBay rep turbo, so it is a journal bearing. A real GT35 is a ball bearing. A ball bearing, you need water and coolant, or water and oil connected, and you need an oil restrictor because you don't want to overload your seals with oil. This is a journal bearing, so I am absolutely just going to dump oil into this thing. So I got a very open, big port feed nipple there. The one that comes with the Z1 Motorsports KAT oil feed is a restrictor. You don't want a restrictor if it's a journal bearing. You just want as much oil as possible. If you get enough oil in there, you don't even need to connect the water lines because it's an oil, mainly oil-cooled turbo being journal bearing. And the amount of oil, as long as it's enough oil, doesn't necessarily matter. And then this is a 90 degree 4AN right here. That goes right on there. Just like that. I have that one routed right through to the middle intake runner. 
And then that'll go down to the oil filter housing, which I'm going to show you now. All right, we're going to look from under the car now. You can do this from above. It's just going to be way easier to show on camera from underneath. I'm going to put this up a tiny bit more. But basically what I'm going to show you is the T that goes off of the oil filter housing to the line. So there's the my oil pressure sensor from Wiring Specialties. The stock oil pressure sensor is a 1/8 BSPT British standard pipe thread, which is different than a 1/8 NPT pipe thread. So, got to watch out there. Make sure it's the appropriate thread so nothing leaks. Realistically, it probably won't leak if you just ram it down in there and screw it in, but just very easy if everything's just right. So I got a 1 8 MPT adapter from a 1 8 BSPT, and then this is another little AN, 4AN90 that the actual line is going to plug into, or screw into, rather. Line's right here. I'll, I'll get to that. I just want to explain it. So that's how that works. Then... On my return, see there's a 10AN fitting coming off the bottom of my turbo from the oil outlet. That is going to be a straight AN fitting coming straight down to a 90 degree fitting on the side of my oil pan here. And that is going to be the turbo return. So there you got it, feed and return. And... That should about cover all the things I really had to figure out and get creative with that I couldn't find super solid answers for. Um, more will be coming. If you have any more questions, just ask in the comments. I'll do my best to answer anything. Um, otherwise, thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully this thing is on the road. <sighs> Ooh, maybe this week, next week, around that ballpark. And I mean on the road. It'll at least be done being built Monday or so. That's in two days. So, uh, we're getting there. It's been a nightmare, but we're getting there. These wheels have got to go. Pretend you didn't see those. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I appreciate y'all watching, and have a good one.